Hello everyone, welcome back to the 17th century mitten series. This is part three and I hope you're looking forward to seeing what happens next. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start with the butterfly. I'm going to back stitch around the edge and then satin stitch the innards. And now to start the satin stitch. I find that doing the back stitch outline first really helps with giving a 3D sort of effect with the thread and it also just keeps everything a bit more accurate. I know where I'm positioning my needle, you're feeling for the edge rather than looking at your pencil line. And now it's time to do the inner pink. With the pink in it, I'm actually feathering the stitches in the sense that I'm crossing them over in the center there, just so that the blend with the outer color, the sort of coral color, um, goes in with the lighter pink. And just so that the two directions of stitch meet in the middle. I'm just gonna repeat the same but with orange and cream thread. I'm just going to back stitch the outline and then satin stitch in the centre. Again, like with the top two wings, I'm just repeating that feathering technique with the bottom two. Here I'm starting the satin stitch of the main body of the butterfly. I'm just using the lovely olivish brown colour, um, the same that I used in the eye motif on one of the first videos of the mittens, just to tie in those two different motifs. <laughs> So I'm actually going to start with the two darker leaves on the outside and I'm just going to do a simple fly stitch to fill those in. Do the same with the lighter green in the centre. So 
So with the strawberry, I'm just going to satin stitch from top to bottom, quite long stitches, and then over sew some little uh, gold work thread, just to look like seeds. So let's get started. to do the seeds on the strawberries so all I'm doing is sort of couching down with the gold thread to lengths of the red thread so as you can see by the strawberry on the left I sort of try and do it in a brick pattern a sort of alternative pattern um, to give a bit more texture. The tricky part here will be to get the two sort of strawberries looking quite similar because they're so close together on the gauntlets it's going to be quite important to get them at least a little bit symmetrical although they are sisters not twins yeah I think they look quite good together now I'm going to complete this leaf here just with the fly stitch, just like with the strawberries, just in view there. Um, I'm gonna just do a larger version of that, really, and it'll be a bit more effective because you can see it. So I'm just going, starting at the tip of the leaf, just so that the, the knot is basically out the way of all the bulk. So now it's time to move on to the grapes. I'm going to start with this central one here. Um, I'm just going to use a satin stitch but I'm just going to build it up and up and up so that I get the curvature and the roundness of the grapes. This one is going to be blue and I'm just going to start with a central starting point. I'm just going to catch that thread I've just done over the top, just catch it and then meet with that bit there and as it's being pulled tight I'm just manoeuvring the thread around the threads I've just done just to create a rounder shape.
the purple grapes, I am just going to use a 100% cotton embroidery thread purely because I don't have a silk one in this shade. So I'm just going to use what I have. So just same again. Looking at my research of extant garments and pictures of original embroideries, I decided to add some light green to the tops of the main colours. A lot of embroideries sort of had this of grapes and berries, uh, just to show the, the growth of and ripeness of fruit, and also it just broke up those sort of lumps of colour. <laughs> Time to start the leaves. I'm just doing a simple satin stitch just over the top, alternating between light green and dark green for the leaves there. Just a mirror image of that that I've already done on the left hand side. Here we go, last leaf and then I've finished this section. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this journey so far. During the next video, I'm going to continue with the motifs around the edges there, and that we will tackle those massive leaf motifs. I'm not going to film these pairs of leaves or this section purely because these leaves are going to be the exact same as these ones and this the the techniques I've already covered in this section here so rather than repeating myself and making these videos any longer than what they need to be I thought I will just crack on with those in the background of course I'll post that on my Instagram but here we go look at that light reflection which bit is your favourite bit so far? I'd like to know. I think mine are either the butterflies or the grapes. I'm not quite sure yet. But I just love the colours of the butterflies, if I'm honest. But yeah, to keep updated with this journey, I'll pop my Instagram in the description box. And that is all for this chapter. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this journey, then please subscribe. And if you enjoyed it that much, please hit the like button. And I will see you in the next video.